ओके सो आई वॉज गोइंग थ्रू द कमेंट्स ऑन द चैनल एंड देर आई फाउंड अ वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग क्वेश्चन दैट वॉट इज द डिफरेंस बिटवीन डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ स्टेरॉइड्स विच वी यूज इन आई सी यू आई मीन सिस्टमिक कॉर्टिको स्टेरॉइड स्पेसिफिकली हाइड्रोकॉर्टिसोन मिथाइल प्रिडनीसोलोन डेक्सामिथाजोन सो बेसिकली दीज थ्री आर यूज कॉमनली सो वॉट इज द डिफरेंस बिटवीन ऑल दीज एंड वाई वी प्रिफर वन इन वन पर्टिकुलर कंडीशन एंड द अनदर इन अदर पर्टिकुलर कंडीशन सो आई डिसाइडेड टू मेक एन आई सी टॉक ऑन दिस so again i reviewed the literature gone through the text and then i have jotted down certain points so that in this short video we don't miss any practical aspect we'll be discussing only those part which is important to answer this question and which we can remember and which is the only thing which is required for this answer and which will help you to apply these principles in your clinical practice in icu so first we'll discuss a little bit of physiology about the corticosteroids and then we'll go to the actual answer of this question don't skip the physiology part otherwise you won't be able to understand the actual answer of this question so corticosteroids or steroids are secreted from your kidney so kidney is divided into medulla and the cortex so the medulla secretes epinephrine adrenaline those sort of molecules which are not of concern for today's video so we skip that so we we remove that so what we are left with is your cortex so cortex has three layers glomerulosa fasciculata reticularis so the lower most reticularis or the inner most reticularis secrete your adrenal androgens which is also of not concern for today's lecture so only two layers remain which secrete the corticosteroids the glomerulosa and fasciculata now corticosteroids are divided into two types based on the activity what activity they are having mineralocorticoids and the glucocorticoids mineralocorticoids are the corticosteroid which are more mainly concerned with managing the minerals what are the minerals salt potassium I means sodium potassium and your water so they maintain that part glucocorticoids are the thing which prepare your body to uh, with flight of fight response you can understand remember why this gluco gluco means glucose glucocorticoid glucose where we need glucose where the body needs to fight either fight or flight stress response so cortisol is the glucocorticoid so your top layer your glomerulosa secrete mineralocorticoid which is aldosterone which is concerned with the salt and water balance in the body your middle layer fasciculata secretes cortisol which is a glucocorticoid which is uh, in, uh, involved in the stress response to the body so there are many uh, actions of the glucocorticoid but what we are interested in icu are, uh, are the two actions one is their anti inflammatory effect which helps in reducing the inflammation reducing the edema part and the other is increased blood levels of sugars glucose which is also helpful in times of crisis so you understand that the topmost two layers glomerulosa secrete uh, mineralocorticoid which is aldosterone concerned with the salt and water retention in the body the second uh, layer secretes your glucocorticoid which is your cortisol and it is helpful in uh, in maintaining the stress uh, man managing the stress response which is anti inflammatory effect and your um, um, uh, glucose levels so now coming to the steroid point how this these two principles will apply when we discuss different steroids so the steroids which we use in icu are divided into two uh, two categories glucocorticoids and the mineralocorticoids so remember but important thing you need to remember they cannot be isolately divided into glucocorticoid and mineralocorticoid some glucocorticoid glucocorticoids have mineralocorticoid activity also and mineralocorticoid also have a glucocorticoid activity and this will help to use decide the use where we are using so let's divide first the glucocorticoid part so glucocorticoids are divided on the duration of action means duration of action for which they are acting in the body so they are short acting intermediate acting and the long acting so i'll be enumerating only those which are used in our intensive care so that we don't get confused in too much details so short acting means they act for 1 to 12 hours and the most common which we use is hydrocortisone intermediate acting 12 to 36 hours means half day to uh, 1.5 day 
then what which is the commonest in this methyl prednisolone prednisone or prednisolone so methyl prednisolone which is it is used commonly and the long acting one is which is 36 to 55 hours means 1.5 to 3 days 2.5 or 3 days the duration of action remains is dexamethasone beta methasone we are not okay and to remember we are only discussing the iv corticosteroids we are not discussing the topical one which which is of not of interest for this particular isotope talk so we have decided the glucocorticoid in uh, short acting intermediate acting long acting short acting hydrocortisone intermediate acting your methylprednisolone long acting dexamethasone the mineralocorticoid which we use in our ICU is fludrocortisone. It's the one of, I think the only one which you use in ICU frequently, fludrocortisone. So now comes the important part. Based one is duration of action. Why duration of action is important? We'll discuss in the end. So now, as I told you, all these steroids are not completely either glucocorticoid or mineralocorticoid. They have different different overlaps. So that any potency or reference which we compare for any of these steroids is compared with your hydrocortisone. Hydrocortisone is a short acting and it is it has equal activity of glucocorticoid activity and equal mineralocorticoid activity. So one is to one. It means it, it has equivalent glucocorticoid activity and equivalent mineralocorticoid activity. It means it will reduce the inflammation. It will it as a side effect it will increase the increase the glucose level but at the same time it will also have a mineral corticoid activity it will retain salt and water it will absorb the salt and water from the collecting tubes of uh, tubules of the kidney and in turn will lose potassium but it will retain salt and water so so hydrocortisone will be short acting and it will having anti-inflammatory effect as well as having the mineral corticoid activity retain salt and water now intermediate uh, intermediate acting methylprednisolone methylprednisolone glucocortic uh, glucocorticoid activity is five times that of hydrocortisone it's more potent glucocorticoid it will reduce more uh, inflammation it will reduce inflammation but it's mineralocorticoid activity is half that of hydrocortisone means it will not retain that much water it will not retain that much salt so the fluid overload uh, will will be less in, in patients in which you are using methylprednisolone now dexamethasone dexamethasone has 25 times of glucocorticoid activity as compared to hydrocortisone means its anti-inflammatory effect reducing edema effect is very much potent while it has got no mineralocorticoid activity it will not retain uh, salt and water so there will not be fluid overload sort of situation in this so understand that point glucocorticoid activity is decreasing your inflammation mineralocorticoid activity is your uh, is increasing your salt and water retaining salt and water so in, in increasing the fluid in the patient so now let's see where these are recommended as per the guidelines you have seen that in uh, hydrocortisone is usually recommended in sepsis guidelines where in where vasopressors are increasing uh, you, you have gained fluid resuscitated so now you can add hydrocortisone at this stage why hydrocorticoid at this stage because its glucocorticoid activity is minimal so the anti-inflammatory effect will be up to extent which can help in this uh, sepsis but it not it it will not be that much high uh, glucocorticoid activity so that it it suppresses the immune system so that sepsis can flare up also because it has got equivalent mineralocorticoid activity it will help in retaining salt and water from the kidney so it will help in maintaining the map uh, of the patient so that's why we use hydrocortisone in your septic patients so inflammatory part will reduce to an extent but it not be too much so that it can reduce the immunity also it will help to maintain the map and also blood sugar levels will be a little bit high in, in sepsis you have patient have hypoglycemia it can help in that also now your dexamethasone the extreme one which has very, very potent glucocorticoid very potent anti-inflammatory effect but zero mineral corticoid activity it will not retain salt and water so where we use dexamethasone where it is recommended usually in conditions which are life-threatening in terms of reducing the edema like in 
brain vesogen ink edema so it means where 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 there is a so much if edema if we don't give if we don't reduce the edema there can be a lot of swelling it can compromise the life of the patient so dexamethasone is uh, used in edema in uh, meningitis where reducing the inflammation edema is very very important because if that doesn't get reduced patient it can be life threatening also there is no mineral corticoid activity so there will not be fluid overload but the potency is high and it will act for a longer duration of action while in hydrocortisone we can adjust the uh, dose of hydrocortisone so that we can review every 12 hours because in sepsis we need to make a balance while in uh, dexamethasone it will be very potent and the effect will persist because we are not dealing with sepsis in this sort of conditions uh, like brain edema though in meningitis we have but we don't have that much um, generalized sort of picture where the sepsis will flare up but even if we say that your brain edema or inflammation part is so important that we need to give a steroid which will reduce the edema to a much stronger um, extent now also you must have seen that a post extubation if we have laryngeal edema or patient becomes uh, uh, patient develops stridor here also reducing edema is very very important if we don't reduce the edema in time it can compromise their way there were dexamethasone which has got 25 times the activity of your hydrocortisone most potent it will help to reduce the inflammation in edema and it will be helpful in this condition now in between these two you have your methylprednisolone which is a uh, uh, intermediate acting and it has also got a little bit of uh, 50% of the salt and uh, uh, water retention capacity so it is usually in the chest inflammatory conditions where it will reduce the edema for a longer period of time at the same time the uh, uh, it will not flare up the sepsis to that extent also if the patient is of cardiac failure or the patient is retaining fluid the mineralocorticoid activity of methylprednisolone will be less so it will not retain that much salt and water if we give too much steroid dexamethasone in this pneumonia or other condition the immune system will go very much down in the in the and your what you call that um, uh, the flu, uh, uh, sepsis can flare up while hydrocortisone is a, also a good choice but if your patient is in cardiac overload or fluid overload then it will also retain salt and water so fluid overload can be a problem with hydrocortisone but because it is a shorter duration we can adjust it so methylprednisolone is usually in, used in condition where there is inflammation we need to reduce the inflammation uh, like uh, like you have seen in covid also uh, there were guidelines uh, up, after 7 days you can use and there is uh, less risk of fluid overload so methylprednisolone is used in those conditions where reducing edema is not life threatening but we need to reduce the inflammation part so this is the choice based on uh, on their glucocorticoid and mineral corticoid activity now fludrocortisone fludrocortisone has potent 150 times the mineral corticoid activity and very little glucocorticoid activity that's why in patients of adrenal insufficiency we call this is adrenal insufficiency and patient shock is not responding patient was on steroid for a for longer period of time or patient is an oncology patient or patient is of refeeding syndrome anything for which there is adrenal insufficiency and patient is not responding the shock is responding there we give fludrocortisone so it is adrenal insufficiency so what will happen while after giving uh, fludrocortisone 150 times the mineral corticoid activity it helps to retain salt and water and it will help to maintain the blood pressure map of this patient that's why fludrocortisone is helpful so this is the logic and the duration of action which i told you comes important is hydrocortisone is preferred in septic conditions because we can adjust the hydrocortisone durations if we give today if, suppose it it is become detrimental we can taper off tomorrow but if we give dexamethasone which will definitely suppress the immune system and it will act for 3 days so it will become detrimental 
so duration of action is important similarly methylprednisolone has a longer duration of action 1 to 1.5 days so it will reduce the inflammation or suppress the immune system for a longer period of time that's why in icu in wherever you feel that there is a component of sepsis and there is no risk of that fluid overload hydrocortisone is preferred where you feel that there is a we need to reduce inflammation sepsis is also there but there is also chances of fluid overload then you preferred methylprednisolone and where the priority is reducing the inflammation or edema not uh, the uh, sepsis part like in meningitis in brain edema laryngeal edema use dexamethasone so this is the thing uh, you can go through any chart which is available in your book any chart which is available in the net you go to uh, potency comparison of different sort of corticosteroids and mineral corticoid you get lot of chart where you will find this uh, duration of action you potency then glucocorticoid and mineral corticoid activity but what i wanted to stress what i wanted to explain you the logic behind all these steroids which we use in icu still if if you have a uh, certain doubt you can ask in the comments of this section i would love to reply to them but i hope majority of the part we uh, uh, or majority of the doubts are covered in this talk and hope the question is answered see you in the next video thank you